some of you know that very well. And I have second and third generations of students I've worked with. I have a young girl whose father was in the Broadway show Nine back when he was a little boy. I have a girl that played Annie and Gretel, and uh, she, her mother was my first child student back when children didn't have vocal coaches or voice teachers. And um, I will be glad to let today go wherever you want it to go. It's just to get a chance to get to know you. Um, I have a colleague calling in, hopefully from Australia. I have my young friend from Cleveland. I got another one from New York. And with the online teaching, I'm able to go all over the place. As a matter of fact, uh, right after this, I hit Austin, Texas. Now, I couldn't really go from Scotch Plains, New Jersey to Austin, Texas in the real world. So I'm very lucky and gotten pretty comfortable working online and working with virtual piano tracks and microphones and sheet music on PDF files and getting everything uh, rolling the way you need it. So if you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask, or maybe you want to just raise your hand so we know, so Sam knows she can unmute you, and um, we can go on from there. I'm just here to help you do whatever you, whatever you need. Whatever you would ask me in my office, you can ask me here in my dining room. <laughs> in your dining room. My dining room. So I just quickly want to know, who auditions, who is auditioning professionally at this time? Right. I can see nobody. Uh, right, nobody. <laughs> but, you know, who's been on a professional audition? Okay, who is auditioning recreationally and has an interest in performing professionally at some point? Great. Okay, so we have a nice mix. Okay, so let's first start off with, uh, I, I have a structure, an outline um, mapped out. We can stray from that, but I, I do like structure. So let's start with preparation. Does anyone have any questions regarding preparation, preparing for an audition, whether that's recreational or professional? Well, first of all, without preparation, you're not going to have a successful audition as much as you would if you do prepare. There's a saying I love, which is failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Mm -hmm. The more you prepare, the better you're going to do because you're going to feel confident and comfortable. If your binder is organized, you know where your songs are, you know that you've memorized everything in the binder, you know that your music is in the right key, you know what to expect from the accompanist at the piano, and you're all in, as prepared as you can be, you will still not be prepared because there's a lot about auditions that just crop up at the last minute. You will never know what they're gonna ask you exactly, how many people are gonna be behind the desk, whether they're gonna say, that was nice, or do you have something else? And if you don't have something else, you're gonna feel bad. If they say, oh, who wrote that song? What show is that from? And if you go, I don't know, you're not gonna feel confident. So the thing is, you just do everything you can to prepare, and you still have to mainly prepare for the unexpected. Right. And I actually have some tips that I jotted down, but I'm curious as to what your questions are so we can steer in the direction that best suits you. So Car Karina, did I, do I have that correct? Do you want to unmute yourself? Hi. Um, I was one like, sometimes I have trouble like picking, they say that you can basically sing any song for the audition. And I have trouble trying to pick a song to do like, my voice teacher recommends doing something from like a show that's like known and sounds good after something that I know already. Is that like, how do you feel about like picking songs? For audition? Well, it, it really depends. And I don't think picking the song is as important as you make it sound. It's not as important as you may think. I've never known anybody to get a job because they picked the right song. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of, I always can say songs are like clothing. You don't get a job because you pick the right outfit either. But like clothing, you want the song to be appropriate to who you are, to what you're auditioning for, to what the accompanist is going to be able to play, to what they want to hear. And as far as from a show, um, if you're auditioning for a show, it's good to sing a song that's from a show. I try to suggest to people they don't sing a song from a show that is currently running just because you don't want to be compared to Broadway's Lydia when you sing Dead Mom. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, since no show is currently running, it's, it's open season. You can do whatever you want. Some shows are, are more um, what they call jukebox musicals, like Mamma Mia. Uh, you don't want to sing songs from those if you can help it, unless you're auditioning for another jukebox musical. You want to sing a song that's appropriate to your age and your voice. Now, what, what song is your voice teacher's favorite song for you to sing? 
Right now, I'm working on Cockeyed Optimus. Now, so. that is a fabulous song. It's got a nice story. It's general. It's ageless. What show is it from? That's what you got to know in case they ask. Who wrote it? That's what you got to know in case they ask. Because it's pretty famous. It's Rogers and Hammerstein from South Pacific. So you want to make sure you know. Now, you're working on Cockeyed Optimist. When you say um, you're incredibly or something green, what do you mean by that? You can unmute yourself. Um. Everybody needs to know the meaning of every word that they sing. Because theoretically, these songs are supposed to make us believe that you are just making them up on the spot. And if you sing a, if you sing a word that you don't know what it is, then you're not going to know what you're talking about, are you? Right? But um, in that case, green actually means unripe. You're young and incredibly green, like a green tomato before it turns red, green banana before it turns yellow. But you want to know that because green could also mean jealous. Or it could mean you're ready to throw up. It just depends in what context. So you want to know every word, what it means, and how it relates to the song. And do you know what an optimist is, by the way? It's someone who thinks very positively. Good. That's a good start. <laughs> you gotta know what you gotta know what the title means, right? Are you an optimist? Yeah. Well, that's gonna help a lot, right? Anybody else have a question? By the way, I think Cockat Optimist is a wonderful audition song. If you're auditioning for something in the standard musical theater realm, if you're auditioning for something like Shrek or Susickle, something a little more modern, you might want to sing something a little more, a little more modern. Cockeyed Optimus was around 19 in the 1940s or 50s, so it's it's ageless, but still it's a classic. Bob, is it safe to say we always hear um, you never you had said try to steer clear of shows that are currently running. We always hear, do not sing anything from the show you're auditioning for unless you are instructed to. Uh, and always familiarize yourself with the show that you're auditioning for so that you can sing something in a similar style. Uh, think about the character that you're auditioning for. Try to find a song that um, relates to that character that you can uh, so that the, the production team can see you as that character when you are performing, when you are auditioning, the second you walk in the room. Um, do you agree with that? Sure, absolutely. You want to sing something. But again, picking the right song is not going to get you a callback. Being the right person is going to get you the callback. But yes, the more research you do, the more you're going to know. I mean, if you're going on vacation and you're packing, don't you want to know what the weather is going to be out there? Right? I mean, if, you, if you're going to California, it's not going to be the same as going to Alaska. And I, I've gone to both places. So um, you will pack a little differently, right? If you're, if you're packing to, you know, go to the beach, it's not going to be the same as uh, going snow skiing. So you just want to know as much as you can. You want to know what the show is. If, if they say, um, what part are you auditioning for? You don't want to go, uh, I don't know, what parts are there? You want to know everything you can, but you don't have to make yourself crazy. Because ultimately, you're going to be you. And the nice thing about being a young performer is you're really only probably going to audition to play a young performer. You're not going to audition to play the grandmother unless you're doing it at school and everybody's the same age. So um, you can pretty much just be representative of your age, your experience, your look. If it's a group of young people, usually the taller people will be cast in the older roles and the shorter people will be in the younger roles. That's just the way it is. And... Um, yeah, the more research you do, the better it is. But I, I would avoid learning a new song for an audition that occurs in the next 24 to 48 hours because you're never going to be that comfortable with it unless they give you a song to learn. Now that they can attach PDFs and MP3s to emails, they have a tendency to send out a lot of music that you have to learn really quickly. So you've got to be ready for anything. Another thing, just quickly before we move on to the next question, or um, another thing that I've always learned through auditioning and, and the process, uh, when it comes to familiarizing yourself with the show, if the production team, your agent, your manager, sends you the audition information, the breakdown, and the script is included, you want to read the entire script. Usually whatever is being attached to that breakdown 
there's a reason. So they want to make sure you read the script, you read the sides top to bottom. So um, if you are receiving a script, make sure you read, make sure you take the time, uh, YouTube, you know, YouTube, watch the movie, read the script, do whatever you can. But anything that is in an attachment, you want to at least skim so that you are familiar, okay? Yeah, Any and let, you, let, let a parent skim it too, just in case they have a, a qualm with the script. Yeah. Sometimes it's in the script just to let you know that this is a little bit on the edgy side and they want to know if you're okay with that. Another question? Madison? Hi. Um, Hi. I've been told like sometimes with auditions, there's some songs that you should really steer clear from. That there's some songs that like, oh, they hear it all the time. You might not want to do that. Do you have any songs in mind that you should really avoid for an audition? Well, don't forget that sometimes the reason a song is done a lot is because it's um, a good song. Um, I would avoid songs where people compare you to other people. I would avoid things, let's say, if you're a girl between, you know, seven and 13, I'd stay away from any songs, for example. Um, I don't see a problem with a song that people know because your job is to just do it better than they've ever heard it before. So um, there are always going to be those kind of like eye-rolling songs that used to be I Enjoy Being a Girl was one people just didn't like to hear. Um or I feel pretty, certain songs that were just kind of self-aggrandizing, you know, just kind of show you off. Um, I would avoid things like Don't Run Out My Parade because they think of Leah Michelle or Barbara Streisand. I would avoid things maybe like Adina Menzel type songs because the reason Adina Menzel is so famous is because she's not like everybody else and her songs are really, really hard to sing. So I would avoid songs that... that you can only sing on a really good day. But um, as far as songs that are overdone, there are not that many now. I mean, I would avoid songs. I'll, I'll put more on the list. Um, songs that they give out for the audition. So every girl that's auditioned for Les Mis has gotten Cast on a Cloud. I'd probably avoid that. You know, I might avoid my favorite things because everybody that's ever auditioned for Sound of Music, it's my favorite things. So um, certain songs you just don't, don't want to necessarily do if you can find a substitute that's just as good or better. Do we have any other questions on song uh, choosing? Oh, I see Joshua's here. Uh, He's from England. You met Fiona. Fiona? Uh, well, he lives in New York now. Fiona. Didn't you have your hand what up? Are oh. What are songs that directors are like want to listen to more? Like, what are songs that directors prefer? Like, that maybe aren't done so much. That aren't done so much. Like, what are songs that are different from most? It it, I, I, pl I used to play piano for a lot of auditions, and I can tell you. You just don't know. You don't know what the director really wants to hear. I, I worked with a place called the St. Louis Muni Opera for 17 years. I played the auditions. And they really wanted to hear songs from their show, whatever show they were, they were auditioning for. And at one point I said to them, aren't you tired of listening to that same song from Kismet? They go, I wish everyone would just sing the same song. Then we can compare them easily. Um, every director has their own little proclivity. Uh, Martin Charnin, who was the original director of Annie, used to want you to look right into his eyes. Now, most directors do not want you to look right into their eyes. It freaks me out, you know, if I'm sitting behind the desk. So everybody's a little different. And Martin said to me once that we were auditioning in my office, he goes, haven't they learned to look at the director? I go, most people don't want to be looked at. <laughs> and he was kind of surprised at that. Um, a director wants to see you do your best. Now, what song, what is your favorite song to audition with? Um, probably Ring of Keys from Fun Home. Okay, and which is a very powerful song. Um, it's a little bit repetitive, right? And it's very hard to make a good logical cut because you have to kind of build into that whole, no, handsome, you know, it's, a, it's that kind of thing. Uh, it's not going to be for everything. I probably wouldn't sing it for Annie 
or Shrek, mm-hmm. but for certain auditions, or if you're auditioning for a manager or casting director that just wants to know what you do well, that would be good. Do you have a favorite up tempo? Um. Do you have an unfavorite up tempo? Do you have an up tempo you think is overdone? Do you have an up tempo? Did you freeze? I think she's frozen. (laughs) Oh, that could be. The cold never bothered me anyway, but then you got frozen. There she is. She's unfrozen. I couldn't hear you and like I. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. No, it's okay. Anyway, I was just asking about an up tempo. What's your favorite up tempo to do? And um, notice me, Horton from *Musical the Musical*. It is a beautiful song. It's very cute, and I don't know if I would call it an official up tempo. I would think it's about the same tempo as *Ring of Keys*. You know, it's got that ba da 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 da. I mean, it's 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 it's. I would learn some classic, wonderful, old, like Irving Berlin songs. I'd learn I Love a Piano or Shaking the Blues Away or something fun because back in the 1930s, they would write songs that were ageless because all movies had censorship. So they couldn't say anything really, really grown up in the songs. And uh, you want some fun, standard stuff. And if you ever audition for a show called White Christmas for the role of Susan Waverly, you'll have to sing an Irving Berlin song, which is... um, What's that song again? Um, Lexi sang it a hundred times. Lexi, what's the name of that song? Unmute yourself. Anyway, I forgot. But it's a good song. Look up, uh, look up White Christmas. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you. Oh, thank you, Fiona. Thanks for coming by. Where do you live? Uh, Fanwood. Oh, Fanwood, New Jersey. I'm up in Bergen County, New Jersey. All right, who else? Who else wants to talk? Yumiko, did I get that right? Uh, Yumiko. Yumiko. Yeah. That's why I didn't call you by name because I forgot how to pronounce it. <laughs> but I have worked with Yumiko. <laughs> I just just couldn't remember exactly how to pronounce it, and if I don't have my card in front of me, I, I'm lost. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> So you are talking about jukebox musicals earlier. How do you choose a song for a jukebox musical? Obviously, it has to be like in the era or the style, but that's, you sh- that's, that's yeah. basically it. That's basically it. I mean, a jukebox musical like Mamma Mia is very different than a jukebox musical um, that's the Billy Joel musical, Moving On, or different than the mu- jukebox musical Dream, which was the songs of Johnny Mercer from the 19... 19- 20s, 30s, and 40s. So every musical has its own its own style. And again, it depends what role you're going for. If you're going for an all-teen production of Mamma Mia, you might sing an older person's song because you're probably going for the older person. You know, it just really it really depends. I would have I would always have one or two songs in my book that could be classified as pop. Lady Gaga, um, Katy Perry. Um, um, Miley Cyrus, you know, any of that stuff. I would, I would have something in my book. I'd have something that's not from a Broadway show because sometimes they do ask for that. Maybe a country song also. I would do something also that suits you. Like, let's say you were a great jazz singer. That was your thing. I would have a jazz song in there. If they said, do you have anything else? Say, yeah, I do, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they go, oh, wow, well, okay, I'd love to hear that. Sometimes they just want to hear something because you're interesting. Karen, have, you ever audition- you. have you ever auditioned for a jukebox musical? Um, I haven't, but I have had to sing like a pop or a rock song for like a master class before. And how's it gone? Did it go well? Yeah, it went pretty well. Um, I sang Fire and Ice by oh, Pat wow. Benatar, which... Yeah. Great song, great song. Yeah, so it was like... You but, know, yeah. and Pat Benatar is a very different singer than Carol King, who's a very different singer than you know than Katy Perry, and is a very different singer than Lady Gaga. So they're different styles. Good. Karen. Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm a mom. I'm not a kid. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm a- good. Thanks. I'm a mom. I have a question uh, for kids now online who are auditioning virtually how does this he's my son's never done a virtual audition singing in this format yet 
But what do, what do you expect? What, can, what should he expect? When it's, he's it's funny. It's this? funny. Just this morning, I finished the last chapter of the book that I've been writing for seven years. And we decided to change it to online preparation, online lessons, and online auditioning. Um, is he auditioning live or is he submitting a video? Um, or is this just the So far, he's just um, submitted videos. Well, which is so, great because then he can just do it over and over again until he gets a performance he likes. I'm worried about what happens when he has to do it live or if that even happens. I don't know. Well, the main, thing, the main thing about online lessons, online auditions, and online anything is that at this point, the technology does not, is not a two-way street. I can't play the piano on my end while you sing on your end. That means the track and the voice have to be coming from the same place. So he needs a minimum of two devices, something to play the track and something to record him. Um, like my students, they use usually a laptop or a tablet for like Zoom or FaceTime, and then they have a phone or an iPod or something to play the tracks that they sing with. Um, he's just going to have to do it and do it and do it and get comfortable. I would make him a YouTube channel and let him start posting videos. Let him get really comfortable in front of the camera, see what angles and lighting flatter him. Remember, lighting is really important. People seem to forget that. If you look at Sam on the top left and me, we have probably a lot of light on us because without that, you start looking like a shadow, like a dark shadow in front of a window. I, I changed different locations in my house until I found the dining room table that has two windows facing me, two glass doors to my right, and I have a lamp on the desk just to be lit because otherwise people just, they can't see the expression on your face. Uh, you want to make sure he's singing to a good microphone. I finally learned which end of this microphone to speak into so you can hear me, hopefully. And um, just make sure you have a tripod for the phone or whatever camera you're using. And I would just go waist up. I wouldn't do the whole body unless he's doing a dance of some kind. Sometimes they'll tell you exactly what they want. Also, do landscape mode. Do it the long way, you know, th this way, because you don't want that little corner picture in there. But um, I think you should just practice. And the nice thing about doing auditions, I mean videos, is you don't even have to have an audition. Just have him start singing his stuff, make sure his teacher or coach gives him piano tracks that are properly transposed and the right tempos and everything, and let him do it. And then let him look at it, and then let him do it again and just get comfortable with it. Like anything else, my first online lesson, I was really not comfortable. And I spent a lot of time telling people, no, don't do online. It's not the same. I need to have you in my office. I want to breathe the same air you breathe. I want to be in the room with you. Now I do not want to breathe your air, and I do not want to be in the room with you. So this actually works out just fine. For your self-tapes, for your self -tapes, just, uh, just in case anyone else is, is having um, a similar thought, your self-tapes are the instructions now, especially during COVID and quarantine, the instructions are very specific. You want to make sure that you read every single instruction, um, whether this is TV film or musical theater. If you cannot follow the instructions, you are, your tape will be dismissed right away. If you do not label your, your uh, audition properly, based off of the instructions, they will not even open it. So make sure that you are, in fact, reading the instructions and following everything to a T. Uh, that, that goes for every facet of the business. The first, mm -hmm. or the first part of an audition is following directions. I remember once I did an audition, they wanted 16 bars. And this person came in and I said, wait, do you want me to start from where you go in? Just keep playing. I said, do you want me to take all the repeats? I said, yeah. And they took like four repeats. So it was long. But they didn't stop them. These guys did not want to stop their people. And after the audition, they said, thank you. They threw his resume in the garbage and said, well, obviously, he can't follow directions. If they say wear a red shirt, wear a red shirt. They say slate your name, age, and hometown. That's what you put on. Be very, very careful to follow those directions. And the um, a ve two very close friends of mine who are casting directors, to go to you, uh, Karen, you said something about and forgive me, I'm, I'm just kind of assuming the, the, the trap is that with self tape now you can record over and over and over again until you feel confident and comfortable with your submission. But the trap is, oh gosh, when I have to then audition in person, am I going to be able to do it? 
right? It, that, that first time. So uh, two friends of mine who are casting directors both said the same thing. When self-taping, when they are doing a self-tape for a client or you know, a, um, if they're coaching someone, they do not do more than three takes. After three takes, you know, you should be prepared enough. You prepare for your self-tape auditioning the same you would for an in-person audition. But you should be prepared enough to knock it out of the park within three tries. If after three tries, you as the parent are struggling with, with, um, with your child, maybe, maybe, maybe they just don't want to do it that day. You know, they're, everyone, they're kids. So after three tries, you, you pack it in. Or sometimes the parent is looking for perfection. They say, ah, you took a breath there. Well, I always call things like that not a deal breaker. They're not going to like you, like you, like you hear a bad breath or a bad phrasing or a wrong note and go, oh, no, messed up. Just, just take it easy, relax. They want to see a human being who makes mistakes and just minimize the mistakes. Usually after three takes, the person gets a little tired anyway. So it becomes what we call diminishing returns. You, you do it again and you fix one problem, but then you get another problem because you've cracked on a note that you didn't crack on the first time. So that's what I got. Any other questions? Yep. Jenna? Jenna? Unmute yourself. Hi. Hi, Jenna. Are you Jenna? Uh, yeah, I'm Jenna. Good. All right. Sometimes it's the mom. <laughs> um, I have a question. So normally when I go into auditions, they tell me what song to sing. So should you do the song like do you want us to put our own touch on it? And if so, like, how should we, like, go on and do that? It really, I know it's, it's always says it depends, you know. I mean, I wouldn't make any major changes. If they sent you sheet music and they want to hear bum ba da bum bum ba 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 I wouldn't be changing that. I wouldn't go ba ba da 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 You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make it my own. Because ultimately, they kind of want to recreate the Broadway production. If you're doing Cast on a Cloud or one of these songs that they usually send out, I wouldn't make it my own. If you're doing Ring of Keys, which they send out for Fun Home, I wouldn't make it my own. You want it to be your own emotionally. You want to put your spin on it. You want to feel what you feel as a character. Now, assuming that <clears throat> you are not discussing your your identification with a masculine person with a ring of keys where have you been feeling like that where have you go oh my god that person is just like me you know just make it something that you can relate to yourself but again i would always know what every word means if you do a ring of keys you have to know what a luncheonette is a lot of people don't if you sing pulled you have to know who liberace was a lot of people don't, even a girl I saw on the national tour. So you want to know what all the words mean. You want to know how they can relate to you. What was the last song you sang from a show that you auditioned for? Um, oh, I think it was for the Off-Broadway production. This is like my last audition um, in person. It was for the Off-Broadway production of... Trevor the musical. Right. I thought you were going to say Trevor because my, my client yeah. got that. Of course, she didn't get to perform, but. Uh, oh, uh, Alyssa? Yep. Alyssa Marvin. I, I, I coached Alyssa Marvin's mother when her mother was a little girl, by the way. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, ultimately she had to sing their music. And they wanted it pretty accurate. If you remember, they said MP3s that were kind of exactly the notes and everything. And they're very hard to belt, those notes. So it's not, it's not that easy a show. And it's also something that they probably sent the whole script. Because if your parent felt uncomfortable with you doing a show like Trevor, they needed to know it right away. But that's, that's a very good example. I'm sure you did very well. <laughs> Thank you. And you never know, by the time they end up doing the show, everybody in the show might have outgrown it. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. The younger ones will come through. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. When you're, when you're trying to make a song your own, um, it's important not to stress out, right? So you don't want to overthink it. Uh, something that I always tell my, my clients and my students, 
we as individuals, we are unique, right? We show there are different degrees of emotion. So my anger is different from Bob's anger, is different from your anger, Jenna. My happy is different from Madison's, is different from Vivian's. So we can all play the same emotion, but bring our own uniqueness to the table. So um, many of you probably already know this, for those of you who don't, approach your song as a monologue. And a lot of times you will find gems uh, and different ways to make it your own. So for example, who are you talking to? Um, how do you feel about that person? What is your relationship with the, with the person you're talking to, you're singing to, right? Uh, what do you want in the, in the piece? What is your objective? What is your goal? What do you want? What tactics are you using? So all of that stuff that you, if you ask yourself the questions, your answers are going to be different from someone else auditioning. So it's naturally going to evolve into something that is your own. You're already by, but you have to, as an actor, you have to ask the right questions. And if you do that, then you are beaten, creating a song that is unique to you. So, um, so ask yourself the questions, do the work, do the homework, because there will be plenty of people who will not do the homework. And those are the individuals that are going to audition and sound like they're copying whoever is currently in the show or whoever did the, played the role last. Good answer. Yep. And it all works, you know, but it's, it's just there's no one way of doing anything. But the main things we tell you are things that go for everybody. Make it your own. Make it personal. Make your eyes tell the story. Don't forget, most of your audition is from the neck up. You know, so you have to really know what you're talking about because it's, it's a close-up. And video is even more close-up, right, than it is when you walk in the room. The good thing about a video is you're not looking at strange faces. The bad thing about video is you're looking at a strange camera. So, you know. But the good thing is you can do it again and again and again. But and that's, that's it. A, and that's a good point, too. As you guys are working in this, uh, auditioning in this new world, right, where everything is self-tape for the most part, um, learn on camera skills. Know that gesticulating is not acting. So over, overdoing your arms and hand motions, that's not acting, right? So there is some, there's something to learning how to sing a song, planting your feet, grounding yourself, uh, keeping your arms to your side and telling the story through your eyes. The camera, the camera, your, the, we always say the camera is a lie detector. So yeah, that's, that's true in TV film, but guess what? Now it's true in your musical theater auditions that you're self-taping. So the camera is a lie detector. If you are not truly feeling your emotions, the, the camera will pick it up and right away it'll be a red flag. So, um, so I would practice without using your arms or um, you don't wanna indicate, you don't wanna over gesticulate to get your point across. There's no need for it. Different things that um, I've tried because I struggle with that is um, if I don't feel grounded, you can put uh, water bottles or, or weights in your hands and that will um, just ground you and kind of put you in proper alignment and then you're weighted down so you're not, you, you, if you go to use your hands to tell, you know, to express yourself, you're going to feel that weight and you're going to pull back. So there are different things, tricks and tips that you can do to kind of um, uh, make your performance a little bit more natural. And understand what, what Sam means by gesticulating. Um, I call it indicating more. You don't want to say one. You don't want to say, I think. Because we know, what, we know what you think. We know, we know you think because we know what the word think means. But we do want to see you express yourself with your body, the way you express yourself when you speak. We're trying to take something very unnatural, which is singing, and make it look natural. If you notice, when Samantha was talking about not using your hands, she was using her hands, but she was using them because that's how she's expressing herself. She didn't tell you, she didn't try to do sign language for the deaf. This was, it was just her way. And I try to remember to use hands a little bit because at least you know that I'm thinking. 
Mm-hmm. It's not. It's no more natural to stand with your hands firmly at your sides than it is to right. overdo it. So there's a happy medium somewhere, and that's why doing the song as a monologue will let you examine what your body would do if it's not constrained by the song and the rhythm and the tempo. Right. Nivea, did you have a question? Did I pronounce your name right? Oh, I can't hear you, honey. It's Nivea. Nivea. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Um, well, actually, this weekend, um, I had an audition, and I think, I believe Fiona was there. <laughs> I think she got um, young Elsa. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, look at that. Elsa. I'm guessing that's Frozen Junior. Do you have a question regarding the audition process or what you experienced? Um, Well, yeah, I did use my hands a lot. And um, I do use my my face. So which one do you you recommend? What what song did you sing? Um, For my audition, Mm -hmm. I sang um, Apex Predator. But for the callbacks, I had four songs to sing. Um, From the show? I, yeah, there were actually three shows. There were SpongeBob, uh, Mean Girls, and uh, Frozen. I sense a pattern. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, Frozen, don't forget young Elsa. And I saw my client, I think she was young Elsa and on Broadway. Um, I saw Christmas Eve. And um, there is a lot of hand motions in that show because don't forget that yeah, show is, is based on a cartoon. So they have to, yeah. you know, they're talking about the hands and the, you know, they got the mystical spells and all that stuff. So when, you, when you're doing a musical based on a cartoon, it's also a little different. You know what I mean? Did you end up getting a part in one of them? Happy ending in this audition? Say it again. Elsa. You got young Elsa. Congratulations. I got Elsa. Elsa. The big Elsa. The big Elsa. You must be taller than the little Elsa. That's what happens. Um, uh, let me just, Alicia asked, um, what tactics can you use to get your foot in the door with the director who recasts performers they have worked with before? Um, you know, it, it, you just have to be that person that ultimately it's your turn. Um, as as somebody who has directed and produced shows, I like working with people I've worked with before because I know that they're reliable, that I'm comfortable with them, that they can do the job, that they're not going to quit at the end. And like anything else, you want reliability. And um, ultimately, if you just keep plugging away, you will be the person they've worked with before. It's going to be your turn too. And there's always, don't forget, especially young performers, you guys have very short expiration dates. You know, today's seven-year-old becomes a nine-year-old and suddenly you're a teenager and uh, suddenly you're being replaced (laughs) and it happens. And I've seen, uh, you know, young Nala's and young Simba's voice change, body change and boom, boom, boom. There's a wonderful movie. I think you can see it on YouTube or Amazon Prime or something called Life After Tomorrow. I am in it very briefly considering how long they were in my office. Uh, it's about Annie orphans from Broadway and the tour and what happened to them after that was over and how it ended and how they dealt with checking every day if they grew a half an inch or, you know, if puberty showed up or whatever happened, when do they get fired and what do you do after you get fired if your family is depending on your Annie money to pay the rent. So it's an interesting movie. Um, Sarah Jessica Parker, I think, is it? And Sarah in it? Maybe she's not in it. Andrew McArdle's in it. And a lot of the Annie creators are in it. And um, so you might want to watch that. Life After Tomorrow. It's a good title. And it was done by Julie Stevens, who was a for- former Annie orphan, who I coached when she was a little girl. Anybody else? I saw a hand up somewhere. Up, oh, there's another one. Do you think we can make our own reel to send to agents to try to get representation or do you think we need to hire a professional and how long should reels be? Thank you. Hmm. So I was always taught uh, reels should be no more than three minutes. Um, but now with everything being self-submission, uh, you want it even shorter for the, 
if you can. So um, again, reels are very specific. You'll have people that will request a one minute reel. You'll have people that will request up to three minutes. Anything over three minutes is a big no, no. Huge yeah, no, because no. It, well, it's, it's not only a no, no, they're just not going to watch it. No one's going to watch They're it. They're just not going to take, take the time. They, they usually don't watch three minutes. Right. Um, I, you can make a reel yourself. However, like anything else, I mean, look, I could mow my own lawn. I'm just not good at it. And I don't have a lawnmower. So I hire somebody who mows the lawn. And that person, when he wants his kid to sing, will hire me to work with his kid because he doesn't know how to teach a kid to sing. That's how the world works. And if you can get a professional, if it's just an audition for a specific show that's going to be in and out one time and they sent you music, that's one thing. But when you want a professional reel that's going to represent you and you're going to send it to Carson Adler and to Take Three and to all these agents that see reels, it would be nice if the reel were put together by somebody who's done them before who has an idea of what they're looking for, who knows how to light it, who knows what scene to pick, who knows where to cut a song, and who knows how to balance the sound so you sound like a pro. That's my opinion. Same goes with your headshots and, and resumes, right? Uh, these are your tools as, your, as an actor. They are your promo materials. So you wanna make sure that they are of quality of great quality so that they stand out, right? You're not in the room uh, having a conversation and auditioning for these people so they, they can't get a sense of your personality and your work ethic. You need to show them your work ethic. You need to show them that you care about your career because that's what it is, it's a career. And how do we care about our career? Well, we put the time and the energy and the money into making sure that our promo materials are of great quality. Um, I, you know, something, uh, unrelated, but not so unrelated. Uh, people tell, ask me all the time with headshots. They're like, ah, do I really have to get the heavy stock paper? Yes, you do. <laughs> you do. You absolutely do. The heavy stock paper, you, you pick it up and it's, it has weight to it. So it feels differently. The experience of someone holding it and reading it is different from someone picking up a lightweight resume and it's flopping all over the place. Um, it also stands out in a pile. So if your resume and headshot is in a pile with others that have auditioned, that heavy stock is going to stand out. So yes, you want to make sure that your, your, your materials, your marketing materials are of great quality and show that you care about your career. And that's, that's the main thing, to show that you care. Do you need professional headshots? No, but should you get them? Yes, because they're professional headshots, and it shows you're professional. It shows you've made an investment into your career. It doesn't have to be a huge investment, but it just needs to look like you care enough. And that's a good point. So professional headshots. Professional headshots does not necessarily, necessarily mean over $1,500 for a session. No, 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 no. So, gonna, your face so, is going to change. Right. So professional headshots, you can still get an affordable professional headshot, um, especially if you are a younger child who is changing quickly um, because you're going to need headshots probably every six months to a year. So um, find an affordable, reputable photographer. Yeah, but somebody who's done it before, who knows what he or she is doing, and um, you, you don't have to spend more than, you know, like over $1,000. It's just, yeah. <laughs> um, just get something simple. You want to get different looks. You want to get your hair down. If you're lucky enough to have hair, you want to get your hair down, have it up. If it's curly and straight, get, get it straight, then wet it, make it curly. You know, just get as many looks as you can get and just see which is the best and then let your agent or representative help you pick out what headshot to get because you don't, you're not the best judge of yourself. Nor are your um, parents. Cast, this casting director, Jen Rudin, she's worked with Sam before. She's, I've known Jen since she's 12 years old. She casts a lot of the Disney stuff. She was head of Disney theatricals casting. And she has a service for a low fee. She will help you pick from your proofs which headshot you should print. You don't have to take her advice, but, you know, she's a casting director. She knows kind of what they're looking for. Any other questions? There might be some in the chat. I'm going to see. Esther? 
what what can I be doing while stuck at home to continue to grow as a performer? Um, well, take online lessons, first of all. Keep learning new songs. When my students um, are working with me, I still have all my cards from my office, so I know I know where I left off with them. I got I got everything, everything set. Um, I will send them PDF fold fly. Um, PDF sheet music. I will send them MP3s on their cell phones or however they want it sent or email, and then they can play them and learn them. I might send YouTube links. Usually, I discourage YouTube, but nowadays we kind of need it because you got to get an idea of how a song sounds. And I'm not there playing for you, correcting every note. And um, you just need to keep doing that. Read, watch videos, take classes, take things like this. I mean, why not? You got nothing to do. It's an afternoon. It's free. You know, neither Sam or I normally work for free, so you're getting us for free. And what's the worst that can happen is you'll learn something. So do a lot of that. Um, take dance classes. My wife takes two Zoom dance classes every morning. And um, that's how she starts her day. And she's older than I am, so she, she, does, she does well. And... Um, I just think you need to continue to improve. Practice your auditioning online. Take a song that your voice teacher gave you, get a track on a, on a phone, set up a tripod, and record yourself. See how you like it. Worst case, you got something to send your grandparents. Best case, you may put it up online and people will see it. I agree. And read, 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 read. Read backstage.com, read playbill.com. There's so much out there to read. You could not read everything that they send you. There's yeah. just so much stuff, especially now. I mean, now you've got, uh, I mean, you have people doing concerts. Uh, Kelly O'Hara is doing a concert in her living room. I mean, what more do you want? Yeah, definitely read. Read articles uh, written by, by professionals. Expand your knowledge outside of the musical theater productions, the styles that you prefer, right? Learn musical theater history, read and, and educate yourselves. That is gonna, that will help you and will go a long way. Um, also in a, in a self-tape submission world, I'm really big on uh, analyzing my self-tape auditions. So I will take an audition and I will watch it over and over and over again. And uh, in the most lovingly way, tear it apart. <laughs> uh, because I want to know, I want to know what I'm doing well, and I really want to know what I need to improve on. So um, I take past auditions and review them and analyze them. Uh, other things, um, a few of my casting director friends have said to take the time and record to record two songs, record two monologues, and that, and really perfect them and have them in your back pocket on the ready so that you can submit if ever, uh, if ever an audition pops up and there, you know, you can submit whatever, um, whatever you'd like. That way you're not stressing out in the moment. Maybe you have a, a handful of tests coming up and you can't focus on the audition well guess what you already have you already have a great recording of a song already done you already have a monologue that you've worked on that's already filmed and looks beautiful and is ready to submit so um you can work on those things as well and, and i know other, the, i'm sorry the uh, one the one thing you can really do and you should do if i mean definitely is watch at least one movie musical a week Okay, watch South Pacific. It was a movie. Watch King and I. It was a movie. Watch Bye Bye Birdie. Watch musicals that you just don't know and you're not familiar with so you get an idea of what's out there. Uh, PBS has things, uh, PBS and all the stations, Fox, they have Hairspray Live they're showing again and Peter Pan Live and Sound of Music Live with uh, Carrie Underwood. I mean, these are great things to see and they're, they're all playing them for you now because they've got nothing else going on. So um, rather than just watching somebody in their living room deliver the news of the day over and over again, watch a movie. Get, get to know what the characters are in those movies. Take notes of maybe you'll hear a song. Maybe you'll hear Kim McAfee sing One Boy in Bye Bye Birdie and go, ooh, I could, I'm going to ask my voice teacher for that song because that's a good song for me. So it'll give you some chances to improve yourself. I'm sorry, Esther, Sam. Esther, did you have a question? This little girl has a question. Um, uh, my name is Kyla. Esther is my mom. Hi, Kyla. Um, Hi, Esther. 
Where's a good place to find more songs for my book? I would, well, I would start by assuming you have a voice teacher or vocal coach. Let them teach you, you know, they, they teach you songs that they think you should know. And there's no lack of songs out there. If you go to, go online, go to Amazon.com and say audition songs for young girls. There are books filled with audition songs. There's no lack of songs. Look at shows. Look at shows that have young girls in them. Do you know a song from Annie? Do you know a song from Les Mis? Do you know a song from Sound of Music? Do you know a song from all the shows that have young girls in them? And then you've got the junior versions now. You have Guys and Dolls Junior, which should really be called Boys and Girls. But it's Guys and Dolls Junior, and there's a lot of songs you're going to be called upon to do. Have you, what shows have you done? I haven't done any shows. Okay, well, you will. What songs do you sing at auditions? Do you have a song that you love to sing? I love to sing Happiness. From I love that song, too. I love that song, too, from Charlie Brown. And um, wouldn't, you make, wouldn't you make a cute Patty or Sally? Now, you know that your good man, Charlie Brown, the revival, has a song called um, My New Philosophy. Look at that. If you like Charlie Brown songs, look at other Charlie Brown songs. Then you can look at who wrote New Philosophy, which is a man named Andrew Lippa, and then go on iTunes and search Andrew Lippa and see what else he's written. Because if you like his music, you might like some you might like something from The Little Princess. There's a lot of stuff out there. People seem to put a lot of importance on quantity of songs. And how many songs is the right number? You're going to sing one at a time, right? Yes. So as long as you have something you love, that's really good. Do you sing the skate key line? Happiness is finding your skate key? Mm -mm. Oh, no, because they changed those words. Okay. I was going to ask you what a skate key was, but, I'm, but I won't. Because you don't have to know that. I will also say, for anyone who has not had the pleasure of working with Bob Marks, uh, work with Bob Marks. Because when I was younger and struggling with my book and my material, Bob... Ha has a wealth of knowledge like no other, and uh, he really helped me with my material. Um, Thank getting you. To, you're welcome. So <laughs> sometimes, so yeah, you know, the internet is great. We can all Google search. We can all do the work ourselves. But also hiring a professional coach to help guide you is incredibly valuable. And Bob is by far one of the best. Oh, that's very nice of you. I appreciate that. When I started, part, part of the reason I have the knowledge is because when I started, we did not have the internet, we did not have computers, we did not have printers. We did not have MP3 files, PDF files, text messages, email, fax machines, wireless phones. We didn't have a lot of stuff. So we really, if you had music, you had to have paper copies of music and learn it and have it on file and be able to think of the songs and then be able to find the music in the filing cabinet. It was very different. You couldn't do a keyword search you know, online. There was no such thing. So it really helped me kind of um, prepare myself. It's kind of like preparing music on a computer. When I started, we didn't have computers, so I had to write music by hand, and I was a hand music copyist with pen and ink. So I learned a lot of the rules and the techniques that people don't learn nowadays because they were born into computers. So, but you know what? You're gonna your children one day will say, "You didn't have holograms of your grandparents sitting in the living room." You know, no, well, we didn't. How'd you get along without that? You know, so every every age has something new. My grandmother grew up, they didn't have a car, she had a horse. You know, so everybody's got, got another generation of things, and you're going to be very surprised at what they invent in your lifetime. That'll make your job a lot easier. But the one thing is, when you go to an audition, you're still in an unfamiliar place with unfamiliar people doing unfamiliar things, and it's still going to be very nerve-wracking. There's always going to be stage fright, no matter what they invent. That never went away. Well, you guys were wonderful. You had such great questions. I hope that you enjoyed the session and got something out of it. 
I know Bob is a very busy guy. So I, you're going to Texas right now. Is that what you said? I'm going to Austin, Texas. Yes. Austin, Texas. All right. So yeah, if Texas. anyone has any questions that uh, they didn't get a chance to ask, would like answered, feel free to put it in the chat or email me. Um, I can share with Bob and, um, and I have no, I have nothing really going by, on. By the way, I'm not really going to Texas. I'm just going to Texas virtually. Tomorrow I go to Nevada virtually. It just depends. I've been to Fanwood. I, I know there. I'll go to Cleveland if you need me. Um, also, um, what was I going to say? Yes, I am Bob Marks on everything, by the way. I'm bobmarks.com. If you want to, I have pages on coaching online, pages on setting up Zoom. I have pages on whatever you really want to know about. And you can always contact me on Instagram. I'm Bob Marks, B O B M A R K S. On Facebook, I'm Bob Marks, B O B M A R K S. And you can always find me. I made myself very easy to find. So um, if you need me, you know how to reach me. And thank you, Sam, for the for the uh, for putting this together. This was a lot of fun. Great so students, much. great questions. Some old familiar faces, and some new faces, and some mom faces, and some kid faces. And I'm really, really happy to have the opportunity to do it. We'll do it again one day. Sounds good. Sounds good. Be well, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Okay. Follow us on social All media right. and stay in Take touch. Take care. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye, honey.